So I'm listening to this guy yammering on about affiliate marketing in a hotel restaurant after hours at a business conference. He's flashing cash, buying drinks, and talking big. People are starting to gather around him, like kids swarming an ice cream truck on a hot day with dollar bills clutched in their sweaty fists. Traffic is where it's at, he proclaims. His followers pressing closer, they're nodding, seemingly mesmerized as if God himself had come down to earth for a chat. The guy sits back in his chair, then slowly takes a sip of his top shelf whiskey on the rocks. Then he adds, and the real secret to making more sales than everyone else is to add value to an offer. The crowd murmurs a little bit. More nodding, more pressing closer. I mean, if this guy was a candle, his followers would have burnt off their eyebrows since they were sitting so close to him. Someone else in the crowd calls out from the back. That's the key? So if you add a bonus product to every offer you promote, then you'll become a super affiliate? A smile slowly spread over the self-proclaimed guru's face. It grows so quiet in the corner that you could hear the ice cubes tinkling together in his glass as he swirls his drink around. That's it, he says. That's the secret. Right then, I knew he was all hat and no cattle. This guy had no idea about the real secrets of affiliate marketing. Sure, adding value to an offer helps with conversion rates. But if he was seriously saying that adding value is the secret to generating lots of sales, then I was willing to guess he had rented that fancy suit he was wearing. And that's the problem with trying to get any information at these conferences or even online. There are too many pretenders, too many wannabes, too many self-proclaimed gurus. Of course, they're all legends in their own minds and they're feeding you bad information. Now that stops right here, right now. You see, I've put together an affiliate marketing video training course that goes beyond the basics of setting up your affiliate business. What you're about to discover are the real secrets of affiliate marketing. These are the actual advanced marketing strategies used by two of the net's top affiliate marketers to bring down six figures a year, simply by promoting other people's stuff. These strategies have worked for years for these two super affiliates. They've worked for countless other super affiliates in every niche on the planet. And you can be sure these affiliate strategies will work for you too. Prepare to have your eyes open to what the super affiliates really do to generate commission checks that are so big they'd make Donald Trump blush. Let me give you a quick overview of what you'll discover inside these exciting jam-packed videos. First up, you'll get a startling look inside the mind of a super affiliate. Here's a little secret. Every super affiliate on the planet started from zero, just like you. They weren't born with a huge list of prospects, they didn't have magical superpowers that created traffic, and they didn't use a pocket watch to hypnotize their prospects and make them buy. But there is one thing that they might have been born with that you don't have yet. And that's a unique mindset that gives them the Midas touch where every affiliate product they promote turns to gold. Now you'll find out how to harness five powerful mindset factors for yourself that will give you the mind of a super affiliate. Next, you'll discover the surprising truth about what really works in affiliate marketing. Here's the deal. There is no one magic bullet that will make all your affiliate marketing dreams come true. But there is one thing that comes awful close. What is it? It's testing and tracking. A lot of affiliates will roll their eyes or discount this idea right now. But if you're one of those who's willing to learn, then in this video you'll find out how the super affiliates keep crushing their competition by tracking, testing, and tweaking the most important parts of their campaigns. Another thing this training program reveals to you is five, that is, count them, five different ways to get vendors to send you traffic and sales. Now, does that sound a little cuckoo crazy? Does it sound like I'm totally out of my mind? Well, it's not crazy, and I'm not out of my mind. Just watch these videos, and you'll find out these five surprising traffic generation strategies for yourself. Next up, you'll find out how to negotiate to get the best super affiliate perks on the planet. You don't need to be a bona fide super affiliate to get the best perks. You just need to know how to ask for them. And now in this video, you'll discover the seven sweet perks that you can get. Plus, you'll find out the best way to approach vendors, so you're almost guaranteed to get everything you ask for. Another thing you'll discover is the secret to overcoming bad sales pages. You know what I'm talking about. You run into a product that's the best thing to hit the market since sliced bread, but the sales letter stinks. It looks like something a kindergartner scribbled out while he was off his ADHD meds. This is a sales letter that couldn't sell a mirror to a raging narcissist. 
If you ever run into this sort of drivel, don't give up on the product until you watch this video to find out the four clever tricks for getting high conversions when the vendor gives you a junky sales letter. This is a surefire way to start closing more sales, and you're going to love it. Another thing you'll find out is how to put the magnet in your lead magnet. Most affiliates know that they need to lay out an enticing bit of bait on a lead page to capture prospects on their list, but they have no idea how to do it. They're totally clueless. And that's why this video gives you four surefire tips for creating lead magnet pages that attract subscribers almost like magic. Plus, you'll find out which tool the super affiliates use to quickly and easily create high converting lead pages with just a couple clicks of the mouse. You'll also find out how to keep your prospects from running off with your competitors. Here's the shocking secret. Your prospects just aren't all that into marketing monogamy. Sure, you really want to be the one and only affiliate marketer for all your prospects, but your competitors are totally flirting with them. And if you don't know how to put a stop to this, your prospects are going to be taking long romantic walks on the beach with those competitors in no time. So how do you avoid this? Well, it's simple. You train your prospects to come to you first whenever something new hits the market. This video will show you exactly how to do this, so you'll always get first dibs on the most profitable customers. Another thing you'll discover is how to do affiliate marketing like a boss. You know what? Lots of affiliate marketers are pretty clueless about what makes customers take out their wallets. And that's good news for you, because when the majority of your competition has no idea what they're doing, it's so much easier for you to swoop in and steal their customers. All you have to do is position yourself a certain way in your market, which will create hordes of fans and followers who hang on your every word. That's what you'll find out how to do in this video, and once you implement this shockingly effective strategy, your affiliate business will catch fire. And that's not all. You'll also find out the real secret of generating big commission checks. You see, the super affiliates know that the real key to making a ton of sales is all about the level of engagement they have with their prospects. The right level of engagement gets prospects to buy something, even if they don't want the product or their spouse says no. Now that's power. If you'd like to learn these extremely effective strategies for yourself, then order this video program now using the link on this page, and you'll discover five tips for transforming yourself into one of the most powerful influencers in your niche. And here's something else. You'll also discover how to squeeze every last drop of value out of your assets. Every day, affiliates all over the web are wasting their biggest assets. They've got traffic leaks so big their sites are like sieves. They're not protecting their reputations, which should be guarded as fiercely as the Hope Diamond. And they're blowing off their partners. And that's the same partners who could turn a fledgling affiliate business into a six-figure powerhouse. So don't be that guy. Don't waste everything you worked so hard for. Watch this video and you'll find out how to avoid these mistakes. Plus, you'll discover how to leverage your assets to create more traffic, subscribers, sales, and cash in the bank. And that brings us to the next point, where you'll find out the secrets of moving on up to the upper echelon of the affiliates in your niche. You don't need to settle for just enough to get by. You can make more. You deserve more. And this course will help you do it, because you'll get three more mindset tweaks that will get you thinking and making money like a super affiliate. There's so much good information packed into these videos, you'll want to clear your schedule for the rest of the day and watch every single one of them right away. And you can, starting in just a couple minutes from now. All you have to do to get your hands on the same secrets the super affiliates use to bring down the big commission checks is click the order link on this page. This is one of the best investments you can make in your affiliate marketing business. And if you act right now, you'll get it at a great price too. So click the order link now to get started, and you'll be glad you did. If you ask average affiliates what separates the super affiliates from everybody else, they're going to tell you things like big lists, or good connections, or maybe even lots of traffic. You might have a few wiseacres even doing an impression of Captain Obvious by saying, big commission checks are what separates the average affiliates from the super affiliates. Now sure, all these things are true, but the thing is, every single super affiliate on the planet started at the exact same place, and that's zero. They didn't have a single person on their mailing list until they started building their list. They didn't have a lick of traffic until they started driving this traffic. They didn't have good connections in the niche or anything else until they created or built those assets. The point is, the biggest super affiliates in your niche were once like you. 
They started with nothing, just like you. No list, no traffic, no commission checks. But there's something that happened along the way that gave them an edge. So you want to know what the real secret of what separates the super affiliates from everyone else is? It's this. They have the right mindset. It's that easy. And it makes all the difference in the world. The good news is that if you don't have this mindset yet, you can work on it. So let me share with you a peek inside the minds of the super affiliates. Here's factor number one. Super affiliates treat their business like a business, not like a hobby. There's an old saying that says something like, if you treat your business like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. In other words, you'll get paid bupkis if you just fiddle around and treat your business with anything less than the seriousness that it deserves. One of the problems with folks who treat their businesses like a hobby is that they're afraid of failing. So here's how it works. As long as they pretend that their business is just something fun they like to do in their spare time, then they never have to face the fear of failure. After all, a hobby is just for fun, right? You can't fail at it. Another problem with folks who treat their businesses like a hobby is they're afraid of what other people might say. They don't want to be judged. They listen to the naysayers who say things like, when are you going to quit playing around and get a real job? Okay. It's especially hard when those sorts of comments come from people that are close to you, like a spouse, your family, or friends. If this sounds familiar to you, then I have one thing to say. Stop living your life based on the opinions and approval of others. Okay? Life is short. This is your life. Do what you want and forget about what anyone else has to say about it. The second factor that separates the super affiliates from the average affiliates is that super affiliates are well aware of the many hats that they wear. Your average affiliate goes into the business thinking he's a marketer. So what's he do? He pours all his time, his energy, and his money into being a marketer. And then he wonders why the commission checks aren't reflecting all of his hard work. Okay? A super affiliate knows he's a marketer, but he's also aware of all the other roles he needs to embrace in order to be successful. A super affiliate is a lead builder. He's a salesperson, a researcher, a trusted advisor, an authority figure, and sometimes even just a good friend. Super affiliates may also be entertainers, storytellers, and really good copywriters, too. This is how they hook their prospects and keep them hanging on their every word. Top affiliates may also be project managers and human resource managers if they do some outsourcing. And one other thing, super affiliates are really good at seeing the big picture. Instead of getting tunnel vision by focusing on one aspect, such as promoting a certain product, they see how this one aspect is going to fit into their overall business plan. And that's going to bring us to our next point. The third factor that separates super affiliates from the mediocre affiliates is that top affiliates have a plan. What I'm talking about here is a specific, solid, and well-thought-out plan. You see, saying something like, I plan to make more money, that's not a plan. Saying, I plan to be king of the affiliates and have all others bow down before me, that's not a plan either. Saying, I plan to make gobs of money and then frolic around in it every week, it's not a plan. It might make for a weird video for you to post on YouTube, but it's not a plan. When I'm talking about a plan, I'm referring to a business plan. Of course, this is where you sit down and actually figure out your exact goals and the exact steps you need to accomplish those goals. Your business plan is going to look at your strengths and weaknesses. Your business plan will look at your competitors' strengths and weaknesses. Your business plan will figure out exactly how much time and money you'll need to find your prospects, get them on your list, and start closing sales. The fourth factor that separates the super affiliates from everyone else is that they know the real secrets of making sales. An average affiliate takes up a churn and burn model where they fill their blog with ads, they blast out promos constantly to their newsletter list, they burn through prospects pretty fast, okay? And all the time they try to convince themselves that anyone who didn't buy wasn't a real prospect anyway. Well, super affiliates know that good leads are worth their weight in gold. They know the high conversion rates aren't based solely on adding value to an offer by giving a bonus away. Sure, all these things can help, and they do help, but super affiliates know the real secret to cashing in big time is to build a list of subscribers who know, like, and trust you. So just forget about the churn and burn models or your scorched earth business plan, okay? Focus on building an engaged, responsive audience, and then you'll know what it's like to be the top affiliate in your entire niche, the one whom all the vendors flock to whenever they're releasing a new product. The fifth factor that separates the super affiliates from everyone else is that super affiliates focus on helping their customers first. Let me explain what I mean. 
If you focus on your own needs, then you're going to be promoting some pretty terrible products just because you know you can make a quick buck with them. All right. If that's your plan for becoming a super affiliate, then I suggest you get a sleazy suit, slick back your hair, and start doing that awful creepy thing where you point at people, wink, and your tongue like the stereotypical snake oil salesman. Oh, yeah. And you might also get on good terms with your parents because your lack of income is probably going to have you crashing in their basement for the foreseeable future. If you want to get ahead, then I suggest you put your prospects and customers' needs first. Don't look at them like cash machines. Don't look at them as the people who are going to pay for your next vacation or video game. Don't get desperate when the electric bill is due and look for them to bail you out. Yeah, I know your affiliate marketing does pay the bills. I get that. Why else would you be doing it? But what you'll find is that your affiliate business will make even more money if you focus on the needs of your prospects and customers first. So just ask yourself, what's the best way for me to help these folks solve their problems? Because as Zig Ziglar said, paraphrased, when you help people get what they want, then you'll get what you want too. Or here's another way to think of it. Money is just a measure of how much you've helped others. So do everything you can to solve their problems. You might be surprised to find your bank account overflowing. So that's it for this time. I want you to really think about these mindset factors and other traits and honestly assess whether you believe them and possess them. If not, get to work on changing that because your financial situation isn't going to change until you change the way you view your affiliate business. Coming up, you're going to learn the surprising truth about what really works. See you there. Welcome to video two, where you're going to learn the surprising truth about what really works. Many affiliates, especially those who are new to the game, are looking for that magic bullet that's going to give them an edge, crush the competition, and of course, help them close more sales. Okay, but let's cut to the chase. There's no single magic bullet that's going to get you everything you want. It's a combination of a lot of factors that will turn you into a successful affiliate. But as long as we're on the subject, there is one thing that nearly all top affiliates do, and this thing is something the bottom affiliates almost never do. What is that thing? It's testing and tracking to find out what really works with your audience. Now, if you know anything about testing and tracking at all, then you know it's all about figuring out what parts of your marketing campaign work the best, which parts need a little tweak, and which ones you should kick to the curb. In short, you're going to start analyzing the numbers, including traffic numbers and your conversion rates. I know, you probably never thought you'd have to use math and statistics out in the real world once you finished with that last class back in high school or college, but I think you'll be happy to make an exception here. And that's because testing and tracking can add a significant chunk of cash to your revenue. Consider this example here. Let's imagine that you're pulling in a 2% conversion rate with a product review you post on your blog, meaning two people buy for every 100 people who see your offer. Now let's suppose this is a product with a $50 commission. So when those two people buy, you make $100. So doing the math, you're making $100 for every 100 people who see the offer. Not bad. But imagine if you did a little testing and tracking to get more people clicking on the blog post and more people clicking on your affiliate link. How about if you doubled your conversion rate to 4%? Well, just like that, you also double your income because now you'd be making $200 for every 100 folks who saw your promo. So you can see why testing and tracking is worth it because it can add a whole lot more money to your revenue with really relatively little effort. All right, so as an affiliate, there are plenty of things you can test and I'm gonna go ahead and name some of them for you. You can test the parts of your lead page, such as your headline, benefit statements, call to action, and the overall design of your page to see which factors are going to get more people joining your mailing list. You can test different lead magnet products to see which freebies create a better response. You can rotate affiliate offers in your autoresponder series to see which ones produce the best results for you. Okay, you can test to see if Coke or Pepsi tastes better. Just kidding. I was just testing you to see if you're paying attention here. Okay, going on, you can test the subject lines of emails you send out to your leads. Got a few more here. You can test the other parts of the email, such as your opener, the benefit statements, the call to action, and the PS. You can test your ad campaigns. For example, if you're doing pay-per-click marketing, then you'd test to see which keywords worked best. You'd test your ad headline, and you'd test the body of the ad. You can also test other advertising components, such as ad venues, graphics, and sales copy. 
You might test posts you make on Facebook, Twitter, or other social media to see which ones get the most clicks and results. You may even want to test things like what day of the week people are more likely to open your emails, and you can get even more granular and test different times of the day. You can also test a train that's leaving Chicago going 55 miles an hour with a 5 mile an hour headwind and see when it'll meet the train leaving Los Angeles whose conductor is wearing a purple hat and eating a Krispy Kreme donut. You know I'm kidding, right? I'm just seeing if you're paying attention again. All right, so you have all these things to test. And that brings us to the next question. How on earth do you test and track them? Well, what you need is a tool that does all the work for you. In many cases, you're going to find these testing tools built into the other tools you're already using. First off, if you're using a well-known third-party email service provider like GetResponse or AWeber to manage your mailing lists, then those tools have built-in analytics that will give you information about how many people are opening your emails and how many people are clicking on your links. When it comes to your landing pages, you can use a web app like Landing Page Monkey, which creates professional pages quickly, as well as gathers useful data such as impressions and your conversion rate. Certain advertising platforms also give you built-in analytics, such as Google AdWords pay-per-click advertising. This will help you sort out what keywords and ads work best. Now, if you're testing something where you're not using one of these tools, then you can use something like Google Analytics or the open source alternative at piwik.org. So let me go over a few quick guidelines before I set you loose to start testing your campaigns. First off, be sure to test just one element of your campaigns or ads at a time. There is an exception to this rule, and that's if you're using multivariate analysis. However, if the words multivariate analysis makes you feel like hyperventilating and breathing deeply into a paper bag, then we can safely assume this isn't something you want to try right now. In that case, keep it simple by testing just one element at a time. Let me explain what I mean here. The idea is that if you just test one element of your campaign while holding all the other variables the same, then you can be fairly confident that the one element you're testing is the thing that created the difference in conversion rates. Let me give you a silly example to explain this. Let's suppose you're going out on a Saturday night to look for a new friend. So you buy a new shirt, you splash on a new cologne or perfume, and you make a conscious effort to walk your very best walk. Then you go to a club you've never been to before. So suddenly, you find yourself nearly trampled by beautiful people who are looking to give you their phone numbers. You're happy. But let me ask you, why is everyone flocking to you like moths to a flame? Is it your new shirt? Is it the new cologne or perfume? Is it your fantastic walk? Is it the new club? Or maybe this is the first time you left your house in three months without food stuck in your front teeth. You see what I mean? You have no idea what made you so popular. If you wanted to figure it out, you'd need to systematically test each and every one of those elements separately. And it works the same way with your marketing. Let's say you want to test an email. If you change the product you're promoting and the call to action in your email, then you won't have any idea what caused the change. So this is why you just test one thing at a time. The second guideline to follow is to get about 30 to 50 actions before trying to analyze any of your data. By actions, I'm talking about people performing the specific action you want them to take, such as join a newsletter list, clicking on a link, opening an email, or maybe purchasing the product. If you want to be super geeky about it, you can whip out your abacus and crunch a few numbers to determine the exact number of actions you need to get before you can be statistically confident in your results. However, a good rule of thumb is about 30 to 50 actions. Well, I'm glad you're still with me now that we're at the end of the video, because that tells me that you're going to be taking testing and tracking seriously enough to start doing it right away. So that's exactly what I suggest that you do. If you already have an autoresponder series set up, then start rotating products into the series to see which one works best. Go ahead and fiddle around with your subject lines. Sharpen your calls to action. Same thing goes for your landing pages. Tweak those headlines. Sharpen the benefits. Create some urgency with your calls to action. So get on that right away, because I think you're going to like, I think you're really going to like, what testing and tracking does for your bottom line. Okay, so now you're ready for the next video where you'll discover how to get vendors to line your pockets with cash. Yeah, you heard that right. We're going to turn things upside down and backwards a little bit and get the vendors happily sending traffic to you. When you think of the typical affiliate vendor relationship, you probably think of vendors paying the affiliates to share their assets. 
you drive the traffic, you pre-sell the audience, you create an extra incentive like a bonus, then you pocket a commission when people buy through your link. The vendor provides the product, the sales letter, fulfillment, and customer service. Now let's turn that model on its head for a minute. Imagine if the vendors helped you drive the traffic and you still enjoyed a nice split of the profit. Sounds pretty good, right? So good that you're probably already whipping out your magnifying glass to read the fine print here. But the good news is there is no trickery going on here. Instead, you just need to think outside the typical affiliate mindset and come up with ways to get the vendor to help you make more money. You know, it's no secret that vendors are really eager to help affiliates, especially affiliates who have a good track record. That's why they provide things like email swipes and other creatives. They want to make it super easy for you to promote their products. But let's step beyond basic affiliate tools and think about how else the vendor can help you. One idea is to recruit the vendor to do an interview or even a webinar with you. For example, you set yourself up on a Google Hangout and you ask the vendor for some juicy secrets related to the niche and then promote the vendor's product using your affiliate link. The key to this strategy is that the vendor will usually advertise the webinar to his subscribers. He'll probably also tell his social media followers and blog readers, and that means you'll get a lot of free traffic this way. Of course, when somebody buys from either the live webinar or the recordings, you get a nice commission. Let me share two tips about this before we leave this idea. The first tip is to be sure that the vendor is prepared for the webinar. This is important. If the vendor does a lot of webinars or interviews, then it should be a walk in the park for them. However, if the vendor is new to this kind of stuff, then your job is to make sure he's comfortable. This doesn't mean you need to set him up with a silk pillow and a fruity drink with an umbrella in it. It doesn't mean somebody needs to be fanning him during the webinar. Now that I think about it, that would be a nice touch, but it's not necessary. Instead, you just need to make sure the vendor feels prepared, such as by creating a list of possible questions or topics ahead of time so the vendor knows what sorts of things you might ask. A word of warning, though, don't turn this into a scripted interview or it'll end up being awkward and robotic. Just give the vendor a general idea of what to expect, but neither one of you should be reading from a script, okay? The second tip is to be sure you have people register for the webinar so that you can build a mailing list from your efforts. You want to be sure to segment this list so that you know these subscribers came from a specific interview. That way, in the future, when you promote this vendor, you can offer this list a special bonus or something similar since they're already warm leads for this offer. Okay? So moving on. Another way to get the vendor sending you traffic is to create a lead magnet for him or her. In other words, you create a free report, a book, some software, a video, an infographic, mind map, or other downloadable tools or resources. This freebie should be focused on promoting the vendor's offer using your affiliate link. Then you give this lead magnet to the vendor to offer his subscribers, blog readers, and social media followers. Still another way to get the vendor sending traffic your way is to create a bonus product for him or her. This is a bonus product that's specifically designed to complement or enhance the vendor's product. Okay, for example, if the vendor is selling a golfing guide, then you might create a video illustrating specific golf grips. Or if the vendor is selling a weight loss product, you might offer a calorie counting app. The point is, you create something specifically for the vendor to give away to his customers. This bonus product should be something that works to drive people to your lead magnet page. The cool thing is that every subscriber you get from this tactic is a known buyer. So in doing this, you're building a very valuable list. Another way to get a vendor sending you traffic is to do some guest blogging. If the vendor has a blog, then you can offer him or her free content for their blog. Ideally, any content you offer should be exclusive or semi-exclusive content, perhaps just appearing on your blog and the vendor's blog. But the way to make this work is to focus your article on a topic based around the vendor's product. Then within the article, you can drop your affiliate link. This is a win-win idea because both you and the vendor make money in this. Still another way to get a vendor sending you some traffic is to ask him or her to write an article for your blog. Alternatively, you can ask the vendor to do a text-based interview where all the questions are asked and answered via email. You can then edit this interview and post it on your blog along with your affiliate link to the vendor's product. The reason this works so well is because many vendors are going to promote their articles or interviews on their own blog. They'll also promote it on social media platforms and to their newsletter subscribers. A big tip here, you up the chances of the vendor promoting the content by specifically asking him to promote it. 
That's right, just ask. Tell him the benefits of promoting. Namely, he's going to make money and add a new customer to his list whenever someone buys from the links in the article or the interview. So there you have it. Five different ways you can get the vendor to send traffic to you and help you promote his products. If you've never tried these ideas out before, I think you'll be surprised at how well they work. That's why I suggest you get started as soon as possible by emailing, Skyping, or otherwise getting in touch with your favorite vendor to land an interview or offer some free content for them. I think you'll both like the results. Now, if you want even more results, and I'm sure you do, let's go ahead and move on to another video. In the next session, you're going to find out how to get the same perks that the super affiliates do. And I'll see you there shortly. Let me share with you a little secret. You don't need to be the top affiliate in your niche in order to start getting some pretty sweet perks. So how do you get them? You just ask for them. And this is just the way life works. The guy who has the guts to ask out beautiful women, of course, is the one who gets the date with the supermodels. The employee who asks the boss for a raise is the one who gets the promotion. And the affiliate who asks for the special perks is the one who gets the bigger commissions and other sweet deals. Okay, so it's true you probably can't just waltz in off the street as a total stranger and start demanding perks from vendors. They'll laugh you right off the phone or out of their email box. However, if you've proven yourself as a serious affiliate and shown that you can put money in the vendor's pocket, then you can be sure they're going to be willing to negotiate perks for you. The end result for you? You get to make more money with the same amount of effort. You also get the opportunity to reward your blog readers, your newsletter subscribers, and social media followers for their loyalty. So what kind of perks will you get? Well, if you're a top affiliate for a casino, you might get financial incentives. You might get a limo ride from the airport and a penthouse suite in the hotel. But for the rest of us who promote stuff like books and software, your perks will be more along the lines of the financial rewards. Let me run down some of the perks you might ask for. First, you might ask for a personalized sales page. The reason for this is because it can help boost your overall conversion rate. At a minimum, the sales page may greet your visitors by saying something like, here's a special offer for friends of John Doe. And well, of course, in this example, you'd swap your name in for the John Doe placeholder. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to ask the vendor to upload a sales page you create. This is something you might request if the vendor's sales page totally stinks and doesn't convert. Of course, you wouldn't phrase it quite that way to the vendor. Rather, you just politely request a special landing page for yourself. One note though, some affiliate platforms like ClickBank allow you to link directly to an order form. This means you can write your own sales letter and then link to the order form. So in this case, there's no reason to ask a vendor for a personalized page if you're dealing with an affiliate platform that allows you to link to an order form. Now let's suppose that you're dealing with an affiliate platform where you can't do any direct linking. If the vendor won't grant your request for a special or personalized landing page, there is a sneaky way to get around it. Use the web app called Attention Monkey. Attention Monkey lets you overlay a notification bar right on top of the sales page, which is where you can add some personalization, you can offer a bonus, emphasize the benefits of the product, or do whatever else it takes to get a good response rate. Just check the resources section on this website for more information about the Attention Monkey app. The second thing you can ask for is a super affiliate commission rate, and this is where the perks start getting pretty good. See, affiliate marketing is set up a bit like a fancy nightclub. You got the bouncer at the door deciding who gets to come in. If you get past the affiliate bouncer, well, that's awesome. But you're still only going to be pulling in the commission rate that's offered to everybody else. On digital products, that's usually something around 50%. With physical products, that might be as low as 5%. Now, once you get into this main part of the nightclub, then you'll catch these glimpses of patrons getting ushered into the secret back rooms. If you get a peek inside before the door slams shut in your face, you're going to see free drinks, chocolate-covered strawberries, powerful and beautiful people. Now the same thing happens in affiliate marketing. The top affiliates get ushered into secret rooms where vendors give them huge commission rates. If the public commission rate on a digital product is 50%, then the super affiliates might be getting 60%, 75%, or sometimes even more. And you know what? You belong in the secret room, and all you have to do to get ushered in is to show the vendor you can make some sales, then just ask the vendor to bump up your commission rate. If the vendor doesn't want to risk losing you, he's probably going to negotiate with you. And this is something that's definitely worth the time and effort to do. It can make a huge difference. 
Now, the third thing you can ask for are bonuses for meeting sales goals. This perk is a good way to negotiate with vendors to secure a super affiliate commission rate for yourself. Simply talk to the vendor about sales tiers. As you meet each goal, your commission rate bumps up. For example, you start at a 50% commission rate. When you meet a certain sales goal, you get 55% commission. When you meet the next milestone, you get 60% commissions and so on. The more sales you generate, the higher your commission rate. A lot of vendors are happy to do this because they're only going to be bumping your commission rate when you perform. And of course, you're happy because you're making more money with the same amount of effort. It's a great way to prove to a vendor just how invaluable you are to his team because the vendor doesn't have to risk much. Another perk you can request is to have first dibs on promoting an offer. Many vendors let their top affiliates promote a new offer a few days before the affiliate program is opened up to the public. Once you prove yourself, you're likely to start getting these invitations. But if not, then be sure to ask for them, okay? Still another thing you can request is an exclusive discount for your customers. This is a great way to reward your loyal subscribers, followers, and other fans. You simply arrange to get a special discount from the vendor. If the vendor is set up with an affiliate system where they can give you a coupon code or a special link to track your sales and offer the discount, that's perfect. That's a great way to go. And that's because many of your customers will share this link on social media and elsewhere, especially if the discount truly is exclusive. In fact, you can encourage your prospects to share the link like crazy by giving them a special bonus if they share it, like a free video, maybe an ebook or an app. There's a tool called Social Share Monkey, which makes this really easy because the app unlocks a bonus once your prospect has shared the link on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Just check out the resources section on the site for more information about Social Share Monkey. The sixth perk you can request is a special bonus for your customers. This might be something like access to a membership site, maybe a free report, a free seat at a webinar, a free ebook, or something else. Now, not every vendor has the ability or the desire to create free bonuses for all their top affiliates, but if you prove your metal as a profitable affiliate, there's a good chance the vendor will at least consider doing this for you just to keep you on the team. One last tip on this, you can make this even easier on the vendor by suggesting a specific bonus. If the vendor has a lot of other products on the market, then you might suggest that your customers get access to one of these products as a bonus. That way the vendor doesn't have to spend extra time creating the bonus. He or she just needs to set up a special download page for your customers. It's a lot easier for them. Another perk you may consider requesting is a bonus for introducing other affiliates. Many people call this a bird dog bonus. You find new affiliates for the vendor and they pay you a bonus. If you're pretty well connected in your niche, then you may want to talk to a vendor about you playing the role of affiliate or joint venture broker. You can ask for a straight up bonus for these introductions, or you can see if the vendor will set up a two-tier affiliate program so that you make a commission every time one of the affiliates you introduce to the program makes a sale. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good idea of some of the types of perks you can request. Keep in mind, of course, this isn't an exhaustive list. You might ask for other perks, like maybe instant commissions or being paid in a different way than is offered to everyone else. One word of warning though, please don't turn into a diva. It's okay to make requests, but don't be like a prima donna pushing your weight around and pretending to be more important than you really are. Vendors talk with each other, and you might just find yourself bounced out of affiliate programs if you start getting demanding or acting entitled. Instead, just ask for perks when you know you've deserved them. Make it a win-win situation, and the vendor is going to be happy to accommodate you. And you'll be happy to make more money and get more respect, okay? Now let's move on to the next video and I'm going to show you how to overcome awful sales pages. As an affiliate, you get to control many of the factors which affect your business. You get to control what you sell. You get to control how you sell it. You even get to control where you get your traffic. But there's one thing that you can't control and it's been known to drive a few affiliates absolutely batty. What is that thing? It's the vendor sales page. See, you can come across the best product in the world. I mean, this product could practically be the cure for cancer. But then you read the sales page, and it looks like a schizophrenic wrote it when he was off of his meds. Total irrelevant word salad. Okay, this is the kind of sales letter that couldn't sell hair gel to Justin Bieber. When you see a sales letter like this, you might just be tempted to completely pass over the product. 
But remember, your first priority is to offer your prospects the very best solution for their problems, right? So if this product with the word salad sales letter truly is an excellent product, then you'll need to find a way to overcome the sales letter's poor conversion rate. And that's what you're going to learn how to do in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. The first way to overcome a poor sales letter is to build a strong relationship with your subscribers, blog readers, and social media followers. What you need to do is build a responsive list and following so that subscribers are going to listen to you when you tell them to buy something. In fact, when you have a strong relationship with your subscribers, you can even outright tell them to ignore the sales page and just scroll right down to the order form. If they trust you, and if you've already told them all about the product, then they're going to do it. Elsewhere in some of our other training videos, I've shared in-depth guidelines and tips for building this sort of strong relationship and engaging your audience. So I'm not going to get into that in this video. So let's move on to the next point. The second step in overcoming a poor sales letter is to warm your audience up before you send them to the sales letter. Truth is, you should be doing this even if the sales letter is awesome. The idea here is to present the benefits of the product and work your audience up into a buying frenzy. Okay? When they click on your affiliate link, they should already have their credit cards halfway out of their wallets. There are a couple of ways to do this. However, the best way to warm up your audience is to send a series of emails about the product. Here are a few reasons for doing this. First of all, not everyone will see every email or blog post you make. So if you depend on just one email to sell a product, there's a big chunk of your prospects that aren't going to buy simply because they never even saw the email. The second reason to send out an email or blog series is because some people need to develop a little familiarity with the product before they're ready to jump on the buy button. Your series of emails is going to build familiarity as well as desire for the product. An email or blog series also gives you a chance to hit all the hot buttons, okay? You never know what type of promo a particular subscriber is going to respond to. So you're going to up your chances of finding the sweet spot across all your prospects when you send out different types of promos. The third reason for sending out an email series is because some of your prospects are just slow. You know, like the guy whose wife has to tell him 27 times to take out the garbage? Not that I know anything about that. All right. In other words, sometimes you need to nag your prospects a bit to get them to take action. Sometimes you need to poke them with a cattle prod to get them to take action. This is why you want to create a strong sense of urgency, such as offering a limited time bonus or maybe a discount for those who buy as soon as possible. So you might be asking what sorts of emails or blog posts should you create for this series? Well, here's a few ideas. The first way to warm up your audience is to send out a direct response promo. In other words, you send out a mini sales letter to your prospects. This mini sales letter should hit all the main benefits of the product, mention any bonuses that are offered, and include a strong call to action at the end. You can also send out direct response promos that highlight the main benefit of the product, and then remind your prospects that an offer, such as an introductory discount, is going to end soon. Here's another way to warm up your audience. Send out a product review. This is where you use the product and then you share the strength and the weaknesses of the product. And yes, you should share the product flaws as well. Doing so is going to help you build trust with your prospects, which is going to increase your conversion rate. What's more, sharing the product flaws also gives you a chance to overcome these objections and close the sale. Another way to warm up your audience is by sending out a proof email. Your prospects probably think you and the vendor are making some pretty big claims. So if you can back up these claims with proof, you're going to help close the sale. This can be as simple as sharing testimonials, a case study, or perhaps some before and after photos. If these materials belong to the vendor, just be sure to get permission to copy them into an email or blog post first. Okay? So the bottom line here is that there are a lot of different ways to pre-sell the product, and ideally, you should send out at least three or more emails or blog posts in a series to warm up your audience. Now let's go to the next point. Another trick for overcoming a poor sales letter is to write your own sales copy and then link directly to the order form. If you've got some mad copy skills, then this is a great way to overcome a poor sales letter. All you have to do is paste your own sales letter on your website, then link directly to the vendor's order form. In other words, you completely bypass the vendor's awful sales letter. Not only that, but since you control the sales copy, you also get to test your own letter to improve the conversion rate. And that's a pretty big deal, okay? Let me share a couple quick notes with you. 
First of all, not every affiliate platform offers this feature. You'll need to check with the vendor's third-party or self-hosted affiliate system to see if direct linking is even allowed. Okay. Secondly, not every vendor approves of this. Why is that? Well, it's because many vendors want to capture their exit traffic onto a mailing list, right? And they feel kind of slighted if you bypass their site entirely and go directly to the order form. Personally, if you're making sales, you're making sales, all right? That's a good thing. But some vendors are kind of sensitive about this, and you don't want to develop a bad relationship with a vendor if that's possible not to. So it's a good idea to talk to the vendor first before direct linking. Now, keep in mind here that you hold the cards. If you're making sales for the vendor, then he can either agree to let you direct link and keep sending him customers and sales, or he risks losing you as an affiliate entirely, right? That's something to consider if the vendor gives you any grief about this. One final note and a heads up. Just wanted to let you know darkness and evil does exist in the world, so be sure that you're working with vendors that you trust. You see, sometimes you may create your own awesome sales letter, and a vendor takes note that it's working a bazillion times better than his own terrible sales letter. Next thing you know, the vendor has quote unquote borrowed your letter for his own use. Nice, huh? That's just something you want to keep an eye out for. Okay, now the last point, which is a good last ditch method if the affiliate system doesn't let you link directly to the order form. This method to overcoming a poor sales letter is to overlay a notification bar on top of the vendor's sales letter. I know, this sounds totally sneaky, but it is completely legal. If the vendor site accepts iframes, then you can overlay a notification bar, which hits the main benefits of the product and creates a call to action. Now, if this sounds like a whole lot of technical mumbo jumbo to you, just relax, it's okay. All you need to do is use Attention Monkey, which creates these notification bars quickly and easily with just a couple clicks of your mouse. So now you know how to overcome poor sales pages so that you can start rocking your conversion rate and closing more sales. So let me leave you with one last bit of advice. Check out the resource section on this site for more information about the Attention Monkey app. Be sure to take a peek at the demo to see it in action because I think you're gonna agree it's pretty clever. I'll see you in the next video where you'll find out how to put the magnet into your lead magnet. Do you remember playing with magnets when you were a child? I sure do. I'm sure almost every child who's ever played with magnets still remembers the delight in playing with two magnets that repelled each other. You hovered one magnet over the other, and the loose magnet rockets away from the magnet in your hand. If you had magnets with their opposite poles facing each other, the little buggers attracted each other with quite a bit of force. And to me, it seemed like magic. The cool thing is that you can use this sort of magic in your affiliate marketing. You can create a lead product that attracts your prospects to you with the same white hot intensity of two opposite magnets. This is called a lead magnet product. Seems easy enough, right? And yet, all over the world, there are marketers who are getting this simple step completely wrong. Instead of creating lead magnet products, they seem to be creating products and landing pages that repel their prospects and send them scurrying off into the hinterland never to be seen again. That is a totally lethal mistake. This mistake alone could completely break your business. Why? Well, it's because if you can't capture your leads onto a mailing list, then you're going to have a hard time building a strong relationship with them and getting your offers in front of them. That's why. So let's help you avoid this business killing mistake. Just come along as I share with you tips and tricks for putting the magnet into your lead magnet product and landing page. The first tip is to be sure that you have a professional landing page. Every once in a while, you're going to hear people claim that you could write your sales letter on a piece of toilet paper and people would still read it as long as the message was good. Of course, the people who are saying that have sites designed by web designers who haven't updated their skills since probably 1995 or so. Sure, good sales copy is important and we're going to get to that in just a minute, but a polished landing page is just as important. Take a look around your niche, and I'm sure you'll see that you have a whole lot of competition from other affiliates and even vendors. Everyone wants to get the prospects on their list, and yet prospects don't want to join every list under the sun. I'll tell you what, your prospects are actually looking for a reason not to join your list. All it takes is one amateurish or unprofessional looking landing page, and they're going to assume you're unprofessional or even an amateur. It's not fair, but that's the way the world works. The good news is you don't need to sink your life savings into hiring some fancy pants web designer who thinks he's God's gift to affiliate marketers. 
All you have to do is get your hands on a little web app called Landing Page Monkey. Landing Page Monkey generates beautiful, responsive lead pages for you with just a couple clicks of your mouse. And again, I just want to note you can check the resource section on the site for more information about this slick little app. The second tip for attracting prospects is to provide some strong copy on your landing page. You don't need to provide a lot of copy. You just need to be sure that you grab your prospect's attention and then give them a really good reason to join your mailing list. You can accomplish this with a strong headline that presents your lead magnet's biggest benefits, along with another few lines, or bullet points, that present a handful of the product's other strong benefits. And then you want to be sure to end with a call to action where you specifically tell prospects what to do next to get their hands on the free lead magnet. So here's what to do. Write your headline and then a small list of other benefits. You want to make sure you arouse curiosity whenever possible. For example, you might have a headline like this. Free report reveals the number one way to save $105 on your electric bill this year. Then ask yourself, does this lead page give prospects a strong and compelling reason to join your list? If not, go back to the drawing board. Or you might even consider hiring a professional copywriter to do this step for you. Because, as I've already mentioned, it's important, very important, that you get this step right. The third tip for attracting prospects is to be sure you have something they really want. Pretty simple, but a lot of people overlook this one too. You can't just toss up some resale right products that your prospects have already seen on a million other websites. It won't work. Then you're no better than that weird old woman we all know who offers everyone those odd hard candies that have been out of production since 1960. Do your market research to find out what people really want. Check out marketplaces like Amazon, ClickBank, and JVZoo to find out what products are hot and selling like crazy. If your market's already shelling out cash to buy a certain kind of product, then you know they're going to snap it up if you give it away for free. They're going to love it. Okay. Then you create a product that's directly related to the main product you're selling, which is going to bring us to the next point. This fourth tip for attracting prospects is to create a lead magnet product that works as a sales tool. The whole reason for your lead magnet product to even exist is to attract people to your site and get them on your mailing list. But a good lead magnet also works as a sales tool, and a good sales tool has these two characteristics. First, Ideally, your lead magnet should be something that people use or refer to frequently. It could be a list of resources, a checklist, a mind map, software, or maybe some other kind of tool or resource. These things work well because people use them often, and that means they're going to see your calls to action often as well. Secondly, your product should naturally lead prospects to wanting to buy the main product you're promoting. For example, a free search engine optimization WordPress plugin would naturally lead to people wanting to buy a course on search engine optimization, as they'd get more benefit out of the plugin. Another example, people who opt into your list to get a report about how to set up a website will naturally purchase necessary items through your affiliate links, things such as a domain name or web hosting. Okay, one more example. If you're selling a physical product like barbecue grills and other supplies, then creating a free grilling recipe book is gonna give you an opportunity to recommend must-have supplies that will turn the reader into a master griller. Readers are going to naturally want to buy the affiliate products you're recommending if they're convinced it'll make their meals and backyard entertaining better and more fun. Okay, so that's how you create a lead magnet product that attracts rather than repels your audience. If you haven't already created your lead magnet or landing page, I suggest you jump on that right now. If you've already done this, but the product or page could use a bit more polish, then go ahead and take the time to do it because your business depends on it. And again, be sure to check out the resources on this site for more information about Landing Page Monkey, which will level the playing field between you and those multi-million dollar companies with the high-priced web designers. And with that, let's go ahead and move ahead to the next video. You know, it would be wonderful if all your prospects declared their undying love for you and only you. Hmm? But the truth is, your prospects aren't all that into the idea of marketing monogamy. They find it rather boring, much in the same way a skydiving thrill seeker finds the merry-go-round a bit on the dull side. Sure, your prospects joined your mailing list, and you're seeing them buy from your links here and there. They might even send you an occasional note, reply to your blog posts, or post on your Facebook wall about how awesome you are? Well, it's good for the ego, but kind words alone don't pay the bills, do they? See, here's the thing. 
Your prospects are looking out for their own interests. And that's natural. That's fine. But this means you need to be on your toes because they could run off into the sunset hand in hand with your competitors. Not good. Let's imagine for a moment that all else is equal between you and your nearest competitor. Both of you have developed a relationship with a particular prospect. The prospect knows, likes, and trusts both of you. If you both tossed an affiliate link in front of this prospect, she's probably just going to buy from whatever link gets dropped in front of her first, right? I don't know about you, but racing to be the first to get an affiliate link in front of your prospects sounds totally exhausting. Plus, you got to keep in mind there's all sorts of technical glitches that could mess up this strategy anyway, like an email service provider going down right when a new product is launching. Hey, it happens. But the good news is there's a way to overcome this. And all you have to do is train your subscribers and other prospects to wait on their purchase until they see what sort of bonus product you're offering if they buy through your affiliate link. No doubt you're probably quite familiar with the strategy of adding value to an affiliate offer. You can use it to boost your conversion rate even with cold prospects who perhaps stumble on a product review on your blog. And that's because people like getting more bang for their buck. However, it's also a super slick way to get more of your longtime subscribers and other prospects to buy from your link on newly launched products because they know you're going to offer them an incredible deal that they can't get anywhere else. You see, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Some affiliates create bonus offers which are so attractive that their prospects buy the product almost entirely for the reason that they want to get their hands on the bonus offer. Now, you might be wondering why an affiliate would do this. If their product is so amazing, why don't they just sell it directly? Well, a lot of affiliates don't want to mess with stuff like that. They don't want to deal with customer service inquiries. They don't want to deal with refunds. They don't want to deal with fulfillment and all that other tedious stuff. They'd rather just blast their promo out to their newsletter list and then go back to enjoying their leisure time. So all of this leads to the question, what makes a good bonus product to offer to those who buy something through your affiliate link? Let me share with you a few characteristics. First, the bonus product should complement or enhance the main offer. You're not going to do yourself any favors if you offer a barely related product as a bonus, okay? If this bonus product is going to boost sales for you, it needs to be directly related to the vendor's product. And better yet, it should somehow work with the vendor's product. One example of this would be if you offer free installation to anyone who purchases a piece of software through you. If the software comes with a big commission and installation only takes a few minutes, then this is a pretty simple bonus for you to deliver. If you don't want to take the time, this would be something that would be very easy to outsource also. Most times, however, you'll probably offer a downloadable product so that the process is automated and you don't have to lift a finger anyway. For example, if someone purchases an affiliate offer through your link such as a bodybuilding guide, then you might offer a free in-depth report about bodybuilding supplements. One more example. If you're promoting a product about how to write a thriller novel, then you might offer a book full of thriller plot lines and outlines. You might even give free access to a tool that converts a Word document into a Kindle-compatible format for those who intend to sell on Amazon. The second set of characteristics that make a bonus product produce more sales is if the product is valuable and desirable. Some affiliates think if they stack a bonus package with enough products, then their prospects won't be able to resist. That's wrong. No matter what you're offering, you better make sure it's something your prospects want, which you can determine by doing some market research. And you better make sure it's valuable, otherwise your prospects won't view your bonus as any sort of incentive at all. A lousy bonus might even get the prospects fleeing from you the way those magnets we talked about earlier repel each other. If you want a good example of a couple of affiliate marketers who know how to produce valuable, desirable bonuses, then check out bestbonusblog.com. That'll give you some good ideas of what works. And here's the third factor that makes for a good bonus product. A professional presentation. You want your bonus product to look professional. Just because it's a free bonus doesn't mean that you can put up shoddy, unprofessional work. Okay? Instead, be sure to get good graphics when applicable, get the product itself formatted properly. If you're selling software, make sure you have a polished user interface. You see, everyone says don't judge a book by its cover, but your prospects are going to do exactly that. So make a good impression by giving them something that looks as good as it works, okay? The fourth factor that makes a good bonus product is that it should continue working for you as a sales tool. 
Now, this factor is not going to boost your conversion rate when you're selling affiliate products. However, this factor works to your benefit after the sale as it serves as a subtle sales tool if giving away products as bonuses. There's a good chance that not everyone who claims your bonus is already on your mailing list, right? These products may have seen your offer on your blog, on your Facebook page, on Twitter, or even from an email forwarded by a friend. So the first thing your bonus needs to do is direct the reader or user to your lead magnet page so they can join your mailing list. Secondly, your bonus product may include links to other offers. For example, if your bonus product is a low-calorie cookbook, then you might link to some other good cookbooks for dieters, like a book of smoothie recipes. Another example, if your bonus product is about building a mailing list, then you'd naturally include affiliate links for your favorite third-party email service provider. Okay, so the bottom line is that your bonus offer should be highly attractive to your prospects, maybe even something so good that they'll order the affiliate product just to get their hands on your juicy bonus. And here's one final bonus tip. If you've created a product that really seems in high demand and it does a good job of creating back-end income or more subscribers for you, then you might consider approaching the vendor and offering them the giveaway rights to this bonus. That's right, you let the vendor give this bonus away to everyone who purchases the product. The vendor loves it because they get valuable content to offer to their customers for free. Customers love it, and you'll love it too, because now you're getting a stream of proven buyers clicking on your other affiliate links inside the product and joining your mailing list. Pretty slick, isn't it? So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Take a look at what you're doing right now. Are you adding value to your offers? If so, are you offering bonus products or services that are like catnip to a cat? If not, it's time to whip up something a little more enticing. You'll be glad you took the time to do this once you see how it affects your commission checks. Now at this point, I know you aren't about to settle for doing ho-hum affiliate marketing, so you're about to discover how to do affiliate marketing like a boss. There are a lot of pieces you need to snap into place in order to create a successful affiliate business. You need to do things like create an irresistible lead magnet and landing page, and then drive highly targeted traffic to this page to build your list. Then you need to put the right offers at the right prices in front of your subscribers. You might even toss in a bonus to persuade people to buy a product through your affiliate link. So far, so good, right? If you do just these things, you're gonna make some money. Probably not a lot, probably not enough to impress anyone or make it worth your while to hire a tax accountant, but at least you'll cover your business expenses and have a few bucks left over. But I'm guessing you're not content to just scrape by, and that's why you'll want to pay attention to this video, because now I'm going to start sharing with you some of the secrets that really separate the super affiliates from everyone else. So listen up. One key that makes the super affiliate different is that they know it's important to position themselves as an authority in the niche. And that's because your prospects don't want to follow just any old person in the niche. They want to follow an expert who's also an authority. So what's the difference? Respect. And I'm going to try really hard not to sing that Aretha Franklin song about it, okay? Really, respect is the difference. An expert knows a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean anyone cares right? If you're just an expert, you might end up being the blowhard know-it-all in the niche. People will probably start harboring fantasies of taking you to the bathroom and giving you a swirly. You know what I'm saying? Please don't be that guy. When you're an authority in the niche, then you command respect, okay? People listen to you. People follow you. People talk positively about you on social media. Have you ever watched South Park? If so, then you know all about Cartman bashing people's knees with a police baton while yelling, RESPECT MY AUTHORITY! Okay, I'll let you in on a little secret. That's not the way to build authority in your niche, and it sure isn't a good way to get any respect. Probably about the only thing you'd get is a night in jail, really. So how do you become an authority? Well, all you have to do is follow the tips and guidelines that I'm about to share with you. The first way to build authority in your niche is to simply show your authority. You could tell people you're an authority all day long until you're blue in the face and you pass out from exhaustion, but a big chunk of people won't believe a word of it. And really, the people who are yelling the loudest about being an authority or even an expert in the niche are usually the ones who are trying on the whole fake until you make it shtick. Just forget about that whole thing, okay? So what do you do instead? Simple. You show them that you're an authority, and they can't argue with you. It's pretty hard to argue with irrefutable proof sitting right in front of their noses. 
So forget about writing your average Joe Blow 400 to 600 word ho-hum articles for your blog, okay? You need to put something extraordinary out there. Show people how you can help them. Give them strategies that they've never seen before. Share with them insights and tips that they never knew because you invented them, okay? Blow their mind. That's how you do it. In other words, share information that produces great results. People can't argue with results. If you deliver the goods, you're going to be well on your way to establishing yourself as an authority. A second way to build authority is to flash your credentials. People really don't care about you all that much. Primarily, they care about themselves. And they really only care about you to the extent that you can help them. So you don't want to drone on and on and on about your credentials every chance you get. But you do want to put them out there and make them known. If you've got a boatload of experience, or you've earned some related degrees, or even if you've won some awards in your niche, let people know. The About page on your blog is a good place to flash those credentials. Another good way to flash your credentials is to share them on social media as you earn them. For example, if you just got named as the featured speaker at a prestigious event, or maybe you picked up a respected award in the field, then post a photo of you participating in the event and let your followers know what it's all about. Yeah, some people might accuse you of humble bragging on social media, but if you don't tell your followers about your impressive credentials, who's going to? Right, nobody. It's entirely up to you to get it done. Yet another way to build authority is to prove that you can get results. In other words, you use a little social proof to get people's heads nodding at you in that appreciative, respectful way. Ideally, what you want to happen is to let other people talk about you and how you got them great results. If the buzz is loud enough, your prospects are going to find out. But you can also help the process along by retweeting or reblogging praise from others. Now, if you want to bring the buzz to a deafening roar, then create a contest where people seek to get results based on the methods that you're teaching. One really good example of this is bodyforlife.com, which is a 12-week body transformation challenge that's based on a specific diet and exercise program. It was created by Bill Phillips and sponsored by EAS Sports Nutrition. The site is full of amazing transformation stories. People go to other forums, blogs, and social media groups to share their own Body for Life transformation stories. And you know what? Phillips doesn't have to say a word about his own authority because there are thousands of people sharing their success stories all over the net. And you know what else? You can be sure Phillips sells tons of his transformation guides and EAS sells gobs of their whey protein and other supplements. Selling with authority and proven results works like crazy. Okay, so the fourth way to build your authority is to associate yourself with other experts and authorities. The idea here is that you can borrow some credibility from other influential people. You need to work your way up into their networks and then work with these folks so that others see you as being in the top tier or being a thought leader in your market. I'm going to guess that you've probably already mentally categorized and ranked other marketers in your niche. You have the no names and the no one cares folks down at the bottom. You have the mid-level marketers after that. And then you've got the top tier. And this is the group you want to align yourself with. So go ahead, get involved in your niche, go to conferences, start developing real relationships with the movers and shakers, get on social media and do the same thing. Attend the Google Hangouts and webinars that these folks are attending. Here's an insider tip for you, and listen carefully. Don't be the guy or gal who approaches the influencers in your niche and then hits them up with a joint venture proposal right away. That's totally lame. You don't want to do that. It's totally forgettable, too, because you're going to blend in with all the other people who've tried to do the same thing. Instead, show people respect and approach them on a personal level. If you find out both you and Joe Marketer love deep sea fishing, then connect on that common ground and swap fishing stories. Just think about it. At the end of the day, who is this influential marketer really going to remember? The stranger who talked business with him the whole time, or the one who made a personal connection and showed interest in him as a person? That's right. He's going to remember the one who swapped the fishing stories with him. Another thing you can do is get noticed in your niche. If you make a nice chunk of change for a particular vendor, you can bet that vendor is going to notice. If you start winning affiliate contest, you can bet everyone will notice. Then once you get noticed, it's a whole lot easier to start working your way into the upper tiers of your niche. It makes sense, right? So let me summarize the whole strategy for you here. Don't just be the expert in your niche. Be an authority. 
Write and talk with confidence. Align yourself with other authorities. Show people that you know what you're talking about. And it won't be long before people start to flock to you. Soon you'll be the name on everybody's lips, on their Twitter accounts and Facebook wall. You'll command respect wherever you go. And then when you talk, people will listen. When you recommend a product, people will buy it. And that's a pretty good reason to start building authority right away, isn't it? Well, now it's time to go on to the next video where you're going to discover the real secret of big commission checks. If you've studied affiliate marketing for any amount of time, then you've probably noticed that most courses focus on teaching you how to pick a hungry niche, get them on a list, and then give them what they want. That simple advice will go a long way in helping you become a good affiliate. It's solid advice. But there's one thing that many courses and many affiliates overlook, and that's the relationship and level of engagement you have with your prospects. Now, I've said elsewhere that positioning yourself as an authority is important. However, the second psychological component that triggers sales is based on how much your prospects like you. You've heard that people buy from those they know, like, and trust, and that's absolutely true. Sometimes they even choose to follow people based solely on liking, even if that person otherwise wouldn't be their first choice as an expert or a leader. Let's take politics as an example. Political consultants spend a lot of time and energy transforming their candidates into likable people. You see, it doesn't matter if the candidate has the best policy ideas, is a strong leader, and has the management skills needed to be effective. If the candidate isn't likable, there's a really good chance he or she isn't going to be elected. So you know how it goes. Suddenly you see candidates dressed in jeans and work shirts with their sleeves rolled up. You see photos of them drinking a beer with the locals or playing some kind of sport. You might even see them volunteering at a charitable organization. Okay? And all these things are done for photo ops. It's to humanize the candidate and make people like him or her. The point is, this stuff is really important. And once you really take it to heart, you're going to see your affiliate checks grow. Let me give you a couple of real-life examples of people who cashed in on their likability and the engagement they have with their audience. Take Oprah Winfrey as an example. Whenever she announced her new pick for her book club, the author of that pick became a bestseller overnight. Likewise, anyone who sold a product that ended up on Oprah's My Favorites list was assured of making a huge bundle of cash. And it's because Oprah's recommendation moved products like crazy. Now we have Mark Zuckerberg doing something similar. He launched a book club in 2015, and right off the bat, his very first pick went temporarily out of stock on Amazon because of high demand. Like Oprah, Zuckerberg's influence can generate gobs of sales on any product he recommends. One more example. When the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, wears a particular dress or hat out in public, that clothing style sells out, and the designer becomes famous overnight. She doesn't even have to recommend it. All she has to do is wear it or carry it, and she instantly creates a flurry of sales. Now, here's a little mindset tweak I want you to consider. A lot of people who become familiar with an influencer like Oprah start thinking about how they can get Oprah or Zuckerberg or some other influencer in their niche to recommend their website or products to these influencers' massive audiences. Imagine Zuckerberg posting your link on his Facebook wall. Imagine what would happen if Oprah tweeted your link to her tens of millions of followers. That would be cool, right? Absolutely it would, for sure. But let's turn this idea on its head. Imagine instead if you were the Oprah or Zuckerberg of your niche. That's right, you're the one with the engaged audience. You're the one everyone seeks out because you can turn products into bestsellers with just one tweet. You're the one with all the power and respect. Instead of seeking out influencers to lift your business up, now you're the one whose star power lifts everyone else up when you choose to do so. If that sounds good to you, then listen up as I share with you a few tips for creating this sort of awesome power for yourself. First, you need to build familiarity. That's because liking and familiarity go hand in hand. A good way to do this is to use multi-channel marketing so that you're everywhere your prospects visit in your niche. You'll also want to publish your newsletter and post to your blog at least weekly. Keep yourself in front of your audience to build familiarity, and liking is going to be a natural end result. Second, you need to give people access to you. People can't really like you if you hide behind your corporate logos, so don't do that, okay? 
Don't be afraid to post your photo online, use your real name, post videos of you talking about something, and interact with people on social media. You can even share your passions, your hobbies, and other tidbits from your personal life with people. Take a look at Virgin founder Richard Branson. He makes himself available and even shows vulnerability by showing some of his mistakes. Same thing with Oprah as she revealed her past which was colored with pain, poverty, and abuse. Or look at entrepreneur Mark Cuban, whose blog is very personable. Another good example is Seth Godin, who doles out marketing advice on his blog. These people are worth millions and even billions of dollars, and yet they are accessible, and at times even vulnerable to their audiences. It may just be this accessible and vulnerability that helps cement their likability. The third tip for helping build an engaged audience is that you need to create a brand and then build brand recognition. The point here is that you need to put out a consistent message, and building a brand is going to help you do this. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time getting that likability factor if you seem scattered and unpredictable. Secondly, a good brand is built on emotion. When people look at your brand, they're going to feel something. And this is why it's an important part of the sales process, which is why a familiar brand can help with engagement in sales. Third thing, a good brand builds trust. And as you already know, people buy from those they know, like, and trust. Another good way to build an engaged audience is to make people feel like they belong. Psychologists know that people like to belong. In fact, this is a deeply ingrained part of our psyche. Going back thousands of years, we all needed our tribes to survive. If you didn't belong to a tribe, you'd probably die in the jaws of a hungry bear or at the hands of an angry rival tribe after you made a joke about the chief's mama. And today we still deeply crave a feeling of belonging. Take a look at what's going on around the world. Kids who are bullied are committing suicide, and in part, that's because they feel like they don't belong. I don't care what you're selling. You can tap into this desire to belong by creating a group based on your brand, where your prospects and customers feel special simply because they belong to this group. Sports fans are a good example of this. They even dress themselves up and advertise that they belong to a particular group, such as their favorite basketball, rugby, or football team. Another example of this are brands like Chevy, Ford, and Ferrari, where their enthusiasts are very passionate about their car, to the extent that they wear clothing, advertising the brands. Other examples include religious organizations, political affiliations, and those who are members of a hobbyist group. Just look at gamers. They have an entire culture. Or look at people who smoke e-cigarettes. They do meetups just to get together to talk about their hobby. Another example is the science fiction fan who lives and breathes sci-fi all year long, but especially during conventions. So here's the point. Don't just sit around and wait for your prospects and customers to organize themselves into groups, okay? If you do, you might be old and gray before it happens. Instead, encourage them to organize by providing an online spot for them to get together, such as your website or a Facebook group. Let them know how special they are to belong to this group, and give them an identity, such as a special name for them. For example, Oprah refers to the spiritual segment of her audience as super solars. Another example is the marketing forum called the Warrior Forum, where members are referred to as warriors. Another thing you can do is create traditions or cultivate a culture based on belonging to this group. For example, you might use some jargon only known to your members. Knowing this jargon makes people feel special, and it gives them that sense of belonging that they crave. Now finally, one last tip for engaging your audience is to entertain them with funny, unique, controversial, or otherwise entertaining content. And this is where authority and liking come together to create great results. If you have authority in your niche, then people will check your blog often to see what's new. Now if you entertain your audience, then people are more likely to like you. And when they like you, there is a better chance they'll buy something from you, even if they really didn't intend to buy something or if they didn't even want to buy something. Have you ever had someone you really liked, maybe a good friend, talk you into buying something? Maybe they talked you into going out to dinner with them. Maybe going to a movie you weren't all that thrilled about or even joining a gym with them. In some cases, you may not have really wanted these things for yourself, but when someone you really likes talks to you about them, you listen. And of course, when you listen, you can be persuaded. It's the same thing with your audience. If they like you and respect you, they're going to listen to you. If you entertain them with engaging content, they're going to hang on your every word. All right? Together, these factors make it a whole lot easier for you to persuade folks to buy your little thingamajigs and whoozy whats. Now, here's the clincher. If you've created a culture and a sense of belonging among your prospects and customers, 
Then they'll buy your recommendations just to continue feeling like they belong. Take a look at Apple as an example of this. Some people who purchase Apple products purchase them to the exclusion of any other brand. There's a cool, hip culture of belonging associated with Apple. So every time Apple puts out a new product, people snap it up because they want to belong to this culture of Apple fans. See the power here? Create belonging, create liking, build respect, and you can become the powerful Oprah or Mark Zuckerberg of your niche. All right? I'll let you go now so you can ponder this for a while because these simple ideas you just learned about are really game changers. I don't know about your family, but my mom told me not to waste anything. Waste not, want not, was what she would always say. We always had to flatten out the toothpaste tube and squeeze every last gob of goo out of it before we could throw it away. We ate what was on your plate. We made good use of any shoes or clothing we bought. And you can be sure that we got every drop out of the milk carton before we threw it away. And it turns out mom's advice works really well for those who want to build a thriving affiliate business. I'm not saying you're going to become the big dog in your niche just because you drink all your milk. What I am saying is that if you adopt an attitude to not waste a single resource, then you're going to find your business growing a whole lot faster than you ever dreamed possible. So let's start by talking about the big resource you don't want to waste. That's traffic. Every day you get traffic hitting your site. And every day, the vast majority of this traffic clicks the back button and disappears into the ether, never to be seen again right? So the first thing you need to do to avoid wasting any of your traffic is to capture as many of these folks on your mailing list as possible. Because if you just let them leave your site without joining your list, then you may be kissing hundreds or even thousands of dollars goodbye. Let's say someone comes to your blog to read an article. Then they hit the back button after they finish reading. Boom. Just like that, they're gone. And you can be pretty sure they're not coming back. But that's only if you don't capture your exiting traffic. How about when they hit the back button, you put a super irresistible lead magnet in front of their noses, huh? That's the best way to squeeze every last bit of value out of your traffic. There's a really good tool called Catch a Monkey that makes this simple because it lets you redirect your exit traffic to any page you want. So if someone is reading a post on your blog about the dietary habits of pygmy monkeys, then when they hit the back button, you can toss up an offer for a free video on the same topic. Pretty slick, isn't it? Check out the resource section on the site for more information about how Catch a Monkey works and how you can use it to build your list fast. The second way to avoid wasting any traffic is to test and track your advertising campaigns so that you know what really works. All right, then you won't be throwing good money after bad or wasting time on ad venues that don't bring in targeted traffic for you. I've talked a bit about how to test and track your campaigns elsewhere, so I'm not going to overlap by talking about that topic in this video. Now, the third way to avoid wasting your traffic is to get your existing traffic to send you even more traffic. That's because any traffic generated by your existing prospects and customers is going to be warm, easy-to-close traffic. Mm, Sounds good, huh? So how do you get your existing prospects and customers to send their friends to you? Well, one method to get traffic from your existing visitors is to offer incentives if they tell their friends about your site. A super easy way to do this is by using Social Share Monkey, which lets you unlock a special gift for anyone who shares your content on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. This easy-to-use web app is a great tool for kickstarting a viral campaign. Another idea is to start a viral contest, where your visitors get an entry into the contest for every task they perform, which might include tasks like joining your list or posting about the contest on Facebook. A good tool to run this sort of multiple-entry viral contest is Rafflecopter. Okay? Finally, you might also consider starting a rewards program where your customers get points every time they purchase products through your link. They can then exchange these points for products, for gift certificates, or maybe even discounts on products. So that gives you an idea of how to avoid wasting any traffic. Now, the next point. The second resource you don't want to waste are your joint venture partners which includes vendors. A good joint venture partner can send you a lot of new traffic. They can help you build your mailing list. They can even give you some pretty sweet vendor perks. Don't waste these valuable relationships by taking them for granted, or you could miss out on a lot of valuable traffic or other benefits. Some of the most powerful ways to get warm leads flowing into your site are through joint ventures with influential people in your niche. 
I'm talking about things like swapping endorsements in your respective newsletters, doing webinars together, creating lead magnets together, guest blogging for each other, and sharing each other's content on social media. And these are just a few. There's a lot of other ways you can work together for mutual benefit. That's why these relationships are so important and why you need to be sure you're nurturing these relationships using the two tips I'm about to share with you. First tip, stay in touch with your partners even if you're not working together at the moment. This is a business where it's really easy to fall into the out of sight, out of mind trap. So keep yourself in front of your partners to keep the relationship fresh, okay? The second tip, be sure that any joint ventures you do with a partner end up being a good experience for them. If you do mess up something, Take responsibility immediately, apologize, and then fix it. You want to leave your partners with a good impression so that they're likely to work with you in the future and so that you have a good reputation in your niche. And that brings us to the next point. The third asset that you don't want to waste is your good reputation. As mentioned, you don't want to waste it when it comes to joint venture partners, but you also don't want to waste it when it comes to your prospects. This means you need to take seriously your number one job, which is to solve your prospects' problems. Okay, don't even think about recommending a product to them that you wouldn't recommend to your best friend. Now, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I might just a little bit here. People buy from those they know, like, and trust. All it takes is you promoting a shoddy product just one time, and all the trust you built up will come crashing down around you like a house of cards. Okay, don't forget that. Your reputation is what makes so many traffic tactics work so well. For example, some people will read your guest articles on blogs just because you created a snazzy title. But there's also a chunk of folks who will recognize your name and read the article because they've heard that you're the go-to person in the niche. Same thing goes for things like webinars. Run a webinar as a lead generator and people are going to show up because they've been hearing your name around the web. Create a clever meme, an infographic, or a video and launch it on social media and people are going to go crazy sharing it because they know, like, and trust you. Take a look at Oprah's Twitter account or George Takei's Facebook page for examples of people with good reputations who get a lot of viral traffic. So you get the idea. Whether it's your traffic, your partners, your reputation, or any of your other assets, you don't want to waste them. Don't let them grow cold due to neglect. Which reminds me, have you mailed your list, wrote an article for your blog, or posted on social media yet today? Well, if not, go ahead and get to it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next video where you'll learn a few things about becoming upwardly mobile from the old TV show, The Jeffersons. I've had a song going through my head for a little while now. It's that theme song from the old TV show, The Jeffersons. It's called Moving On Up. Have you ever heard that song? It's all about an upwardly mobile family that moves to a deluxe apartment in the sky because they finally got a piece of the pie. (laughs) I can't believe I just did that. Well, that's what I want you to do. I want you to think of yourself as upwardly mobile because your affiliate business can do that for you. Okay? I want you to get your fair share of the pie. You see, a lot of affiliate marketers start bringing in a little cash Maybe just enough to cover their bills, and then they stop trying. It's like they decided they were only worth 30000 a year, or maybe 50000 a year, or some other arbitrary number. But there is no arbitrary limit on what you can make with your affiliate marketing business. There's no boss telling you that you're only worth X number of dollars a year. You're the boss, so you get to decide how much you're worth. If you want to make more so you're more comfortable in life, you can do it. So make a plan, get serious, and do it. Let me go ahead and share with you a few tips for moving on up. First one, think big even if you're starting small. Some affiliates develop a touch of nearsightedness in that they can only see what's right in front of their nose and everything else in the distance looks blurry. If you wanna be a successful affiliate, then you need to always be considering how what you do today will affect what you do in the future. In other words, look at the big picture. You see, a lot of affiliates start small. Maybe they don't have the financial resources to launch their business properly. Maybe they don't have the time. Maybe they don't have the time or the money. And that's okay if you're starting small, but you need to be thinking big. Don't get comfortable with small lists, small amounts of traffic, or small commission checks. Make a business and marketing plan for how you're going to get from where you are today to where you want to be. In other words, every small thing that you do should be a step towards your larger goal. And let me give you an example. Let's say you're going to take out a banner ad on a niche site. 
This isn't the time to blow your whole advertising budget, okay? Instead, you start small by paying for a small number of impressions, such as maybe a thousand or so. Then you carefully test the banner itself along with the ad venue. If it works, then you invest more money. If it keeps working, then you keep investing and you keep reinvesting back into this ad campaign. And then you want to start diversifying into other ad venues with your newfound profits. You start small, but you think big. And this brings us to the second point. The second bit of advice for growing your business is to reinvest back into your business. A lot of affiliates quit their day jobs at the first sign of success, which means that their affiliate income needs to pay all of their bills. So what happens? The affiliate isn't left with a whole lot of money to reinvest back into the business. The business grows slowly. It stagnates. And then the affiliate wonders when he'll be able to quit scraping by so he can enjoy the finer things in life. Here's the secret. If you want your business to grow quickly, then you need to reinvest back into your business. And yeah, this might mean that you need to keep your day job for a while. That way your day job can pay your mortgage and grocery bill while you reinvest every dollar of business profit right back into your business. Sure, eventually you will quit your day job. But the smart affiliate marketers know their business is going to grow faster as long as they keep reinvesting back into it. You might reinvest 100% of your profits at first, and then 75 and then 50% or some other number. But the point is, make a commitment to reinvesting a certain percentage every month. Of course, this also means you need to be smart about what you're investing in. You don't want to just start throwing money around, like buying software, courses, or tools you don't really need. Listen, just because your friendly neighborhood tax accountant tells you that the purchase is a tax-deductible business expense, it doesn't mean it's a good purchase. So how do you know if something is a good purchase? Well, look at your business plan. If a tool, course, or resource supports some aspect of your business plan, then it's usually a good purchase. If you're buying the tool just because it looked so shiny and you swear it called you by name, then that may not be the best financial move. And now that I think about it, you may want to check yourself into a loony bin if you really did think the tool talked to you. But that's a discussion you should be having with your psychiatrist, not me. So let's move on. Advertising is always a good purchase, but only if you track and test your results to be sure that you are indeed getting good results. Necessary how-to courses are good purchases as long as they fit in with your business plan. In other words, buying a book about how to weave baskets underwater isn't a good purchase, unless that happens to be the niche where you're going to make your money. All right? Investing in outsourcing is also a good idea, as it frees up your time to focus on other, more important aspects of your business. For example, you don't need to create the lead magnets yourself. You can hire a professional to do them for you. So you get the idea. Always reinvest back into your business, but you want to be smart about it. Which brings me to the last point. Look for shortcuts and tools that can make it easier for you to grow your business. As mentioned, outsourcing is one way to grow your business more quickly. Using tools is another. For example, most all of us use autoresponders to build our lists because it would be a huge pain in the neck to manually add people to a list manually send emails to them, manually remove them from a list, and so on. With an autoresponder through a good email service provider, you don't have to do any of this because the software does it for you. That's a pretty obvious example, and yet while most marketers would never think of managing an email list by hand, they waste a lot of time doing other things by hand, like designing their landing pages. Worse yet, some of these tasks require a big learning curve, so you end up finding yourself with your nose in a book trying to learn some complicated code. It's frustrating, and it's inefficient. It can eat up days or even weeks of your time. And of course, this is time you could be using much more productively, such as by generating traffic, tweaking a lead page, or developing a relationship with your joint venture partners. Listen, I just want you to know that there are tools that can do a lot of your day-to-day -day tasks for you. There are tools out there that can give you an edge over your competitors. If you want to grow your business fast, then don't waste time trying to do everything yourself. Instead, see if there's a tool that can do it for you. To find out what types of tools I use, check out the resource section on this website, and there you'll find the exact tools I use every day in my business. These are tools like Landing Page Monkey to create beautiful high converting landing pages, and Social Share Monkey to create massive viral campaigns. And you can find everything else I use in my affiliate business there. So check out the resource section right now because the resources on that list will help you do more in less time and add more revenue to your bottom line.